Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and some of my favorite shows <laughs> came back this week. Of course, I am talking about The Flash and Arrow, so I'm here to talk about these two in particular. First, let's talk about Flash. It was titled Trajectory, and at the very beginning, we see the group, the crew, all decide to go to the club because why not they deserve a night out to have fun and not have to be superheroes for once so they go to this club they're having fun it was very amusing to see them almost out of their element or at least like you don't see them go out and have fun like this that much so it was cool to see that it was cool to see Cisco and Caitlin dancing that was very amusing and Jesse, Harrison Wells' daughter, she was more so wanting to go out there and have fun. She had this, like, weird wrist block bracelet thing around her arm because Wells wanted to keep track of her. She was trying to maneuver it because it was making weird noises when she was talking to Wally. And they had some weird flirting moment. I don't know if that's going to go to anything. Why not? And as she was messing with it, it somehow, some way, played this tape of Harrison Wells saying that he would do anything, including murder, to save her. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how just her trying to turn it off. It made that particular audio recording run. And why would that even be there? Who knows? It led to her later on going up to him and confronting him about it. I can't believe that ultimately she just left. She left town. She didn't even tell him where she was going. Didn't care to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to be here. Like, I know she's mad at him, but like, after what happened to you with Zoom and you being locked away, do you really want to go to a place where nobody knows where you are now? Whatever. I guess that character's gone. Uh, the moment in the club, again, when... Barry and Iris were talking about like their marriage in the future or even in the alternate universe, Earth 2. That was interesting because I think this is the first time they really actually sat down and talked about that. Even last season when they found out they were going to be married in the future, they never really talked about it. So that was interesting. It seemed like Iris was more open to the idea. Barry, I couldn't tell either way. I don't know. I, I still miss Patty. I miss her a lot. But I'm curious. I'm curious how their relationship, Barry and Iris, would be handled. I mean, I like it a lot better than Iris having this whatever she has now with this other journalist. Is it her boss? I don't know. The guy that, that they went out for coffee and he thought it was a date and she didn't think so. But now that she thought about it, she she might be interested. I'm like, I don't give a fuck <laughs> about any of that. But I guess you have to have Iris doing something. We have a new speedster in town who is robbing people. And ha as fast as they were going, it looked just like the Flash. It's, it's uh, quick particles going around, the lightning. And, and this was interesting that it was a woman also. Just like Cisco, I too had the same reaction of like, ooh, she's hot. <laughs> I know, but she's bad, so I know, what can I say? It was interesting that it ended up being this character, Eliza, that Caitlin knew at the Mercury Labs. Uh, and, and she was a scientist who was working on the Velocity 9 with Caitlin. That's how she got this, the speedster ability. That was all interesting, except for I didn't love the whole dual personality thing. That's tricky. When you have a villain that has two personalities, split personalities, and one of them's evil and one of them's not, you have to make me buy it. And this just had, like, what, one quick scene of her reluctantly not wanting to do it and then just becoming that other personality. There was really nothing to it. So much of nothing to it to where you didn't even need it. You could have just had her be evil all along. I don't know, I guess they just wanted to keep some type of humanity to her. Like at the end when Barry was trying to talk her down and bring her back. That was a good moment. I 
kind of like that she didn't go for it though, that it seemed like she was, but then she took the velocity nine anyways and said basically, fuck you, I'm, I'm faster than you, has it feel. Uh, I like the moment when Barry had to overcome what he couldn't do at the beginning, make that jump over the bridge, that was very cool. But when she ran, she started to turn blue, like her her colors were blue, just like what Zoom is, and and then she just evaporated. That was a little disappointing. I, like, I didn't want to just get rid of this character just in one episode. Kind of wish it was like maybe a two-parter or something. She could come back, who knows. Uh, but because of what happened with her, the group is pretty much able to figure out that uh, Jay Garrick is Zoom. They not only figure out because of uh, Cisco's vision, his vibe, but it, just, it all added up, it all made too much sense. And they also know now that Zoom is dying and that's where uh, his need for Barry's speed comes in. And this was interesting. Again, we found out in that last episode that, that Jay Garrick is Zoom. It's a little confusing how they say that he was in two places at once, like somehow if you're a speedster you can do that. I don't know, I don't really know how that works. All in all, it was it was a pretty good episode. Now let's talk about Arrow. Arrow, Broken Hearts was the name. And look, I am a big supporter of Arrow. I love Arrow. I, I've been defending this show, I feel like, the last couple seasons because you see a lot of hate on it online. I mean, some people love it, of course. It still gets good ratings, but I, I see a lot of negative stuff. And I'm quick to defend the show, I am. But I was not really digging this episode. Like, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst thing ever. It wasn't Gotham bad. <laughs> but it was, it was just, I had some issues with it. Let's talk about this for a little bit. At the very beginning, we see Laurel Lance, who is in trial now with Damien Dark. She's going against him, which was something that I'm like, finally, we finally get a scene or a story where Laurel gets to be an attorney for once. And this kind of plays out throughout the episode because she needs more evidence to go against him. And uh, they try to have, like, Diggle take the stand, but that doesn't go well. Shady pass. And then she finally has Quentin Lance, her father, take the stand and risk his reputation to tell everything that's been going on. And it worked. I like that. I like that they finally got a win against Dark and it, they did it the legal way. Even though Dark clearly when he's in prison he, he has his ring. He's going to get out. Of course, of course. I just appreciated the win. Now, I admit after watching Daredevil Season 2 and after watching the, the court scenes in that show, you know, like this was just okay. <laughs> okay. Felicity is officially moving out of Oliver's place. Technically, that was like Thea's place, right? And Oliver was living there. Anyways, Felicity really aggravated me in this episode. Felicity's another character who I was defending for the longest time. I loved her. The first, like, three seasons, I, I liked her a lot. And I liked that these two got together. But season four, I started to see it. I started to see what other people didn't like about her. I start, she started to just really annoy me, and it was in full effect here, where she's she's packing her stuff up, and she's getting ready to move out, and she's kind of smiling and making jokes about it. Now, of course, maybe she was really upset, and this is her defense mechanism, and she's putting on that face so that she doesn't cry. It's just I never really bought that she was that upset, ever. I never even bought that this was all uh, a face she was putting on to, to mask her being upset. She seemed like she was already done and already back to goofy Felicity mode when Oliver was the only one taking this seriously, the only one who was visibly upset. And that bothered me. That bothered me that she was so, quote, in love with Oliver, but it was so easy for her to leave and move on and move out. I was like, what the fuck? Okay, I appreciated that she was willing and wanting to stay on the team. Okay, fine. She tried to make that work. Let's talk about the villain of the episode, Cupid, who somehow got out of Argus. 
I mean, I guess it makes sense, the fact that she did some of the work with the Suicide Squad, and I guess she did enough missions to knock off her sentencing, and she's out now. Okay, fine. The problem is that she's still clearly batshit crazy. Is there not any psych test before you just let a criminal like that out? Like, immediately as soon as she comes out, she's back to crime. And not only is she back to crime, but now she's killing people who are in love. That's her new thing now, is love is dead. Uh, I hate love. Love is evil because Deadshot, I guess, died in that explosion. I don't think he's dead, but... At least Cupid thinks he's dead. And she was so in love with Deadshot that she's upset. And she's going to kill people for it. There's a cool action scene where Oliver on this motorcycle, I love when he's on the motorcycle, and, and Speedy gets on top of the limo that, that Cupid is driving with a married couple in the back. And Speedy, Thea, takes this hard hit into like the, the top of a wall of a a building that Cupid's driving into. That was a really nice stunt, uh, but I kind of found it amusing when they went up to her and Thea just gets up and she's like, I'm okay, <laughs> go get her. So when they go in there, Oliver has a little fight with her and he shoots her with an arrow to tie her up, uh, but then she just cuts out of it. And while Oliver, Arrow, is facing the other way, trying to look at the couple, Cupid just leaves. She sneaks out the window and leaves. And the way how, in the beginning of this fight, Cupid looked like she was trying to kill Oliver with an arrow, like, and then Oliver stopped her. He could actually caught the arrow. You would think that as soon as she cut herself loose, she would have tried to kill him again. It's like his back is turned. You wouldn't try to shoot him with an arrow, like, in the back of the head, maybe? Now that they've realized that she's killing celebrity uh, couples, people getting married. Oliver has the bright idea of, okay, we have to do a fake wedding with Felicity. And Felicity, again, her reaction of like, oh, what, so that she could kill me? No thanks. And even Thea is like, dude, we've done this a, a million times. Like, this is to save other people. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop making this all about you. And let's do what you've been doing to save people out there. If you want to be a part of this team, then fucking shut up and do the job. They finally get her to do it, obviously. And there was a moment when Oliver, because Oliver said he was gonna cancel like the event and cancel like invitations and stuff, and Felicity was getting on him for that. And then when she said it again, he's like, I know, I know, I was gonna do it, but when I picked up the phone, when I if I make this call, then I know it's it's over, like for real. And Felicity's like, it is over, and leaves. Now I'm like, fuck you, Felicity. This guy's upset. What the fuck? Okay, so he lied to you about a son that he had, and I'm pretty sure she knows why he lied, that the mother was holding it against him, that he couldn't see the kid if he told somebody. Like, is it really that fucking bad? Is it really that bad? I, I admit it's, it's a little messed up. It's something that she could be upset about. But then how about they talk about it? How about they talk about it? What is up with some of these shows? CW, sure, but even other shows where, where people who are a couple don't talk. They don't talk to each other. This is ridiculous. I, I just I don't get why she just won't hear him out. Why did they have to have this fake wedding for him to give his fake vows for her to finally actually hear him talk about how much he loves her and how much he just wants another chance and how much he won't lie to her again? And I mean, I don't know. I bought it. Even she seemed like she was moved by it. Then Cupid shows up. Uh, she shoots Oliver with an arrow. It looked like he caught it, but I guess he had like a Kevlar vest, he said. Which is funny, when he got back up and like announced that he, he, he was wearing a vest, couldn't she have just been like, oh, you are wearing a vest? Shoot, right in the head. <laughs> like, I was kind of waiting for her to say, oh, okay, thanks for telling me that, and I'm going to shoot in the fucking head. But she didn't do that. In fact, Felicity... Uh, was talking to her and gave this great big speech about love and about how much love made her a better person and did this and that so even if she died now she could still say hey I was in love once and sure it was a good speech 
But do I buy that it would have stopped Cupid dead in her tracks and even move her? Mm, not so much, but I did find it funny when when Diggle just came in and like shot the thing out of her hand, the detonator, and they all started fighting. It just kind of <laughs> killed the moment. The thing about Cupid is that I kind of like the character, I, you know, I kind of like how how the other way she went in this episode, killing people who are in love. But I wish she was a little more animated or a little bit more crazy. Like, if, if there was just scenes with her where, where I wish she was just kind of like, not Harley Quinn crazy, but just a little bit more like wacky and, and I don't know, what can, you, what can you do? So they stop her. Then Oliver and Felicity have one last scene where Felicity once again gives him the ring and, and shuts him down. And I think she even left the group. Did she leave the group, guys? It sounded like she left the group. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But either way, she just kept, like, denying him, denying him, denying him. And then even in that last scene, that's when I started to get sick of Oliver, like, begging. He was practically begging her to be with him. And I'm like, dude, come on, move the fuck on. Like, who gives a fuck about her anymore? Uh, just, just forget it. You're Oliver Queen. You don't need to be begging anybody to be with you. Very, very frustrating. Like, it wasn't bad. I like the action. I, I like some of the stuff going on, but very frustrating. Oh, well. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below what did you think of these two episodes. Am I being too hard on Arrow? I doubt it because I'm always quick to defend the show, but tonight just wasn't really doing it for me. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!